Good evening. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television, and here is 7 o'clock news bulletin. First, the headlines. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos receives in Husna Shimukh in the Wilaya of Manah credentials of a number of their excellencies, the ambassadors of brotherly and friendly countries accredited to the Sultanate. The ministerial committee assigned to look into shrinking the number of national manpower in oil and gas sector agrees with parties concerned on measures to handle this issue. The Minister of Health stresses the continuation development of quality levels in health sector and reveals expansion plan for Royal, Sohar and Nizwa hospitals. And projects of Mokhezna Airport and Water Purification Plant are inaugurated in the Wilaya of Hema. Good evening once again and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos received in Husna Shimukh in the Wilaya of Manah this evening the credentials of a number of their excellencies, the ambassadors of brotherly and friendly countries accredited to the Sultanate separately. His Majesty received the credentials of His Excellency Sabri Majdi Sabri, accredited ambassador to the Sultanate by His Excellency President Abdul Fattah Sisi of Egypt. His Majesty also received credentials His Majesty also received the credentials of His Excellency Farhad Khleif, accredited ambassador to the Sultanate by President al Bayji Qaid Sibsi of Tunisia.
His Majesty then received the credentials of His Excellency Ambassador Andreas Banayoto, accredited ambassador to the Sultanate by His Excellency President Nikos Anastas Siadis of Cyprus. <laughs> His Majesty also received credentials of His Excellency Ali Fahad Al Hajri, accredited ambassador to the Sultanate by His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Emir of the State of Qatar. His Majesty received credentials of His Excellency M. K. Padma Nathan, accredited ambassador to the Sultanate, by His Excellency President uh, Mithrupala Sirisena of Sri Lanka. Thank you. 
Majesty received the credentials of His Excellency Stefano Lazzarotto, accredited ambassador to the Sultan by Her Excellency President Simonita Sumaroga of Switzerland. During the sidelines meetings, the ambassadors conveyed to His Majesty the Sultan's greetings and best wishes of the leaders of their countries for His Majesty's of good health, happiness and long life, and for the Omani people continuous progress and prosperity under His Majesty's wise leadership. The ambassadors expressed their great honor and delight to present their credentials to His Majesty, stressing their diligence to strengthen relations between their countries and the Sultanate in various spheres to serve joint interest of Omani and their country's people. His Majesty welcomed the ambassadors and thanked the leaders of their countries for their greetings and best wishes, stressing to their excellencies, the ambassadors, that they will receive every support from His Majesty, the government and the Omani people to facilitate to carry out their missions. The credentials presentation ceremony was attended by His Excellency, the Minister of Diwan of the Royal Court, His Excellency, the Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs, His Excellency, the Head of the Royal protocols, the commander of the Royal Guard of Oman and the military ADCs of His Majesty the Sultan. In an implementation of the decision of the Council of Ministers, the ministerial committee assigned by the Council met today to look into what had been done by some companies working in the oil and gas sector and contracting companies of shrinking the number of national manpower as a result of affected or effects resulted from oil and gas prices decrease and their effect on business sector. After detailed review of proposed solutions and their effects on the national economy and the development of national manpower as well as finding an attractive atmosphere for work and investment in the private sector in the Sultanate. It had been agreed with the parties concerned on measures which must be done by the companies as the following. First, subcontracting companies taking contracts from main contractors before taking any decisions towards shrinking the number of national manpower numbers they should adopt the following procedures one should terminate services of expatriate manpower attached to the expiring contra contracts of its work were reduced. The national manpower should replace instead of expatriate manpower in any other work contract the company has obtained taking into consideration experiences and capabilities in replacement programs. An official warning should be issued to the main contractor of the national manpower which are not able to absorb mentioning details of the worker scientific experiences and study qualifications along with mentioning expatriate manpower details which services are terminated. Second main contracting companies, the companies of main contractors which obtain direct contract from production companies before adopting any decision towards shrinking the number of national manpower should take the following procedures. One, should terminate services of expatriate manpower attached to the expiring contracts or its work were reduced. Two, the national manpower should replace instead of expatriate manpower in any other work contract. The company has obtained taken into consideration experiences and capabilities in replacement programs. Three, should review procedures of manpower shrinking done by the subcontractor and make sure of meeting the above mentioned conditions. It should replace whatever can be of national manpower in works of companies or other subcontracts taken into consideration experiences and capabilities in replacement programs. Four, should present an official warning to production company it had contract with of national manpower which cannot absorb mentioning details of the worker scientific experiences, study qualifications and clarifying details of expatriate manpower whose services were terminated. Third, oil and gas production companies should take the following procedures. One, it should terminate services of expatriate manpower attached expiring contracts or its works were reduced. Two, replace national manpower instead of expatriate manpower in any other work contracts the company obtained taken into consideration experiences and capabilities in replacement programs. 
Three, it should review procedures of shrinking the manpower made by main contractor and make sure it had met the mentioned uh, conditions and it should replace what can be from the national manpower in companies' works or other contracts taken into consideration experiences and capabilities in replacement programs. Four, it should present an official warning to the technical team in a period no less uh, than two months from terminating work contracts of national manpower which cannot observe mentioning details of the worker's scientific experiences, studies, qualifications, and clarifying details of the expatriate manpower whose services were terminated. It had been agreed on procedures that the technical team, which was tasked to study situation of the national manpower, which was not absorbed by the above-mentioned companies, as following. One, it should review the shrinking of manpower which was made by production companies and make sure that it was in line with the mentioned procedures. Two, it should implement choices of appointing and training national manpower for absorptions in companies of the private sector either by direct appointment or skilled workers or their enrollment in qualifying and training programs for semi-skilled workers uh, prior to their appointment if it required with notification to the company which obtained the work contract or financial consequences of that act. Three, the company which has the work contract with the worker should abide by financial consequences of implementing appointment procedures as part notification from the technical team. The committee shall continue following up all aspects continuously in order to obtain the best solutions in protecting the interest of the national manpower. The National Committee for Family Affairs viewed most important family protection programs child protection and explanation of Oman child law. That came during its meeting today at the General Diwan of the Ministry of Social Development, during which its members acquainted with programs of Department of Guidance and Family Consultations of the Ministry and mechanisms of its work. The meeting also witnessed a visual presentation on the national program on marital guidance, which will start from point of view of building solid safe family. The meeting was presided uh, over by His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Saeed Al Kalbani, Minister of Social Development. Waiting appointments in the hospital of the Sultanate within the international averages. This was stressed by His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Saidi, Minister of Health, who pointed also that quality levels in the health sector are in continuous development. His Excellency the Minister of Health revealed also the plan to expand Royal Hospital, Sohar and Nizwa Hospital. He also said that a number of other hospitals are in the final designs which expected their construction tenders awarded before the end of this year. You're watching the Sultanate of Oman Television and still to come in our news bulletin. The National Forum for Teaching and Learning English Language discusses experiences of various countries in using technology for teaching English language.
Welcome back uh, to the Sultanate of Oman Televisions, and here we continue with the news. His Excellency Mohammed bin Nasser al Rasmi, Secretary General of the Minister of Defense, received in his office at Muaskar al Murtafa today Lieutenant General Andrew Bush, Director of the Defense Logistic Agency in the United States of America, and his accompanying delegation currently visiting the Sultanate. He welcomed the American guest and wished him a successful visit to the Sultanate. The two sides exchanged cordial conversations and discussed several fields of common concern. Various types of archaeological uh, discoveries at Gulf Cooperation Council countries were showcased at the 5th GCC Archaeological exhibition in its third week. The event attracted many visitors who are concerned with heritage and archaeology. The exhibition embodies the strong historical ties binding the GCC countries over ages. The exhibition was divided into sections according to historical ages, namely Stone Age, Bronze Age, Pre-Islamic Age, and finally Islamic Age. The Sultanate attracts more tourists uh, during winter season due to the moderate temperature and the country's attractive touristic sites. A number of hotels and tourism agency officials in the Sultanate pointed out that hotel occupancy rate increased by 200%, which is likely to raise in the few upcoming months. According to the National Information and Statistics Center, the number of tourists uh, the to the Sultanate by the end of September 2015 amounted to more than 2,936,000 tourists. The month of September alone recorded more than 275,000 visitors with an increase of more than 85 percent comparing to the same period in the year 2014. The statistics also showcased that the total revenue of three to four and five stars hotels recorded more than 131.5 million Omani rials, while the number of hotel guests reached around 820,000. Good indicators for tourism sectors uh, to contribute to the gross domestic product with oil price decline challenges. Within the social responsibility towards residents near concession areas and to facilitate process of workers in oil fields, Occidental Oman Company inaugurated project of Mohezna Airport, an water purification plant associated with oil in the Willa of Hema in the Governorate of Al Wusta at a total value of 35 million Omani rials. New Mohezna Airport considered as one of the important service project in the Governorate of Al Wusta for its distinguished location between Muscat and Salala International Airports. The airport is facilitated with international standards considering in the construction of the runway to receive modern airplanes. The inauguration coincided with the opening of water plant which worked to produce more than 50,000 cubic meters of uh, portable water a day to supply to local community. The inauguration ceremony was presided over by His Highness uh, Sayyid uh, Dr. Fahad bin al Jalanda bin Majid al Said. We are inaugurating officially uh, the Mukhezna Airport. We believe that it is uh, a, a very important uh, uh, occasion uh, that adds uh, a, um, a facility to this, uh, this region that will basically facilitate uh, the smooth movement of uh, goods and, uh, and, and people uh, from, uh, from this part of the Sultanate to the, to the capital. The estimated uh, project value both for both uh, projects is estimated around uh, 50 uh, million uh, Omani rials. It restocked more than 200 academics, researchers and students from 30 countries are taking part in the National Forum for Teaching and Learning English Language by discussing their experiences in using technology in these fields. More details with uh, Sultan Asarai. Rostock College of Applied Sciences organized the second Colleges of Applied Sciences National Symposium under the auspices of His Excellency Sheikh Khilal bin Saeed bin Hamdan al Hajri, Governor of South Al Batna Governorate. The second KCLT National Symposium for uh, this year for this edition focuses on literacy and pedagogy in the digital era, the issues and challenges. Of course, these are very important um, uh, for our students because um, they disseminate. Um, the knowledge and uh, lots of uh, research papers and workshops are discussed here 
um, to uh, disseminate what uh, the uh, latest research have come up with um, with this um, special uh, issue, which is the literacy and the pedagogy in digital era. This symposium came under the theme literacy and pedagogy in the digital era, issue and challenges, and it aims at engaging teachers and researchers in presenting the work and sharing ideas. This symposium actually is going to be really helpful, especially for us as a trainee teachers. Now we are students, yes, but in the future we'll be teachers. And in the future we'll take the advantage of the symposiums and the programs provided, such as the uh, assessment programs and also how to make um, a new digital area, or era sorry, uh, in the future. And also how to make um, the students more involved in our classes. This two-day gathering covers a wide range of topics including language teaching, assessments and electronic learning. There are many challenges that face us as educators um, in our classrooms and we hope by this symposium, by the end of this symposium, that we're going to give some information and have input and output uh, from educators from around the world, about 30 countries. Another secondary issues will be discussed during this symposium are teaching digital approaches, forming digital classroom, social media tools at learning and teaching English language, technology usage at designing English language courses and correcting student mistakes in writing. More than 80 participants from 30 countries participating in this symposium in order to share their experiences and ideas in the field of English language. Sultan bin Saif Sarai from Mustaq College of Applied Sciences, South al Batana Governorate. Light uh, to moderate and heavy rainfall in the wilayas of Khasab, Bukha and Daba in the Governorate of Musandam, which caused a number of wadis and tributaries to overflow. It also caused falling of uh, a number of stones that closed roads. Now for the general weather forecast, clear skies will prevail over the southern with cloud accumulation over the governorates of Musandam and chances of rainfalls. It will be cloudy along the Hajar Mountains and the nearby areas. Winds along the coastal areas of Sea of Oman will be northeastly light to moderate. The rest of the southern it will be southeastly light to moderate. Seas will be moderate to rough along the coast of the governorate of Musandam and Sea of Oman with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters and it will be slight along the rest of the coast with a maximum wave height of one meter.